James Harden is a central catalyst of offense for his Sixers, and this is as polished of a playmaker he's looked in 14 seasons. He adapted his game to the style of play that best benefits his team, and it has him atop the league in assists while still giving defenses 22 points per game. But hang on, hang on. In order to understand how he weaponizes his playmaking, we first have to recognize the differences in his scoring from this season compared to the last. Although his point production was identical in 21, he seemed to be a shell of himself, which made his scoring uncharacteristically one-dimensional. This was as prevalent on drives to the basket as it was anywhere else. There was a lack of burst, so he naturally struggled to create the same separation off of the dribble. That helped defenders cut him off or simply stay in front of him. Whereas this season he's healthier, he's slimmer, and he got his combo game right, which diversifies his scoring attack and makes him a threat at all three levels. For example, he used those combos and refined bursts to create separation, stop a bit shorter, and get you from the mid-range, which he didn't really do a season ago. Now watch this. He comes off the screen into what should be an open midi, but instead becomes a lower percentage float. But this year, he's hunting his shot off the screens and living in that mid-range area where good scores gotta be comfortable. Now, for most hoopers, it's usually their scoring, which has layers. Very few have playmaking bags as deep as this one. Harden's got an all-encompassing floor game. He's the quarterback. OG shows help off ball, so Harden sends Reese away, then takes the screen, which Toronto switches on. But Harden beats the switch. Toronto goes over the first screen, but traps Harden on the ghost screen, the second. As soon as he reads it, it's in Maxi's hands without even looking. The high ball screen generates a switch, but we're watching DeRozan through James' perspective. Trez rolls to the basket, DeRozan as the low man tags him, so James is straight to the corner with it. The Wizards force James into a trap, but James puts some touch on it to get PJ an open shot in his wheelhouse. Now they drop in coverage and watch what James does. He puts Kuz in his back pocket and penetrates until he opens the passing lane. Different look. They don't switch, they double. So Harden finds Melton on the slip. The high ball screen brings Daniel Gafford out past the three point line. And as Bradley Beal redirects to Harden, he splits both with a pass to his role man. House gives him a point, he sees it from half, and uses the screen to get his pass off clean. Yo, yo I'm kinda nice. Slip with screen this. from Shake, the defense switches. Now what? You saw the spit, come on bro. Charlotte switches the first screen, but they use their center to trap Harden on the second. So he puts Embiid in a position to be successful. Now it was OG who picks up Harden, but the transition screen forces a switch, then Harden megs Scotty for an easy rolling two. The Clippers switch the first screen, they switch the second, Harden patiently lets it develop, and again, beats the switch. This is what it's all about. This is floor game. Seeing everything, live reads, reading and reacting, making everyone a threat to score. He gets a switch and makes the big go where he wants. That's how you open the passing lane. Detroit, uh, Detroit does whatever. Harden winds up, he's just waiting on that look from Embiid. Almost three quarters out, right on the hands. He gets into the paint, gets the quote big in coverage off their feet and passes Embiid into a shot. There's that double we've seen before. Lefty dime to Paul Reed, one on one in the paint, he does the rest. Utah switches once, they switch. Look, there's so much more to see than just this. Now let's get deeper, let's explore those playmaking layers. Harden's got this unique ability to control and increase the pace of a game sometimes without even putting the ball on the floor. All it takes is this pass ahead, which has become a staple. Loose ball, live rebound, streak, 
and Uno's gonna find you. This has elevated the Sixers to a team who can get up and down the floor on you, not just slow it down. So Pace, he controls it. He can play big guard. The Kings double, but as they retreat, Harden turns his back to the basket, locates the open shooter, and passes him into a three. Resets a down screen for Embiid. Okay, Halliburton temporarily stays home. Harden reads this from the mid post and beats him on the switch back. Hey, let's reverse rolls. He can effectively enter the ball into the post and reduce his big's workload. This has been arguably one of the biggest benefits to the Sixers half court offense. Harden's entry passes. They're an isolation heavy, face up, post up, dominant team. So to get these guys to rock in positions where they have advantages is crucial. I think back to the Sixers early games this season against Toronto, who notably plays without a true big. I say that to say, Embiid kept winning these battles for positioning, and Harden kept his guy fed by putting the ball where the defense couldn't get to it. That's a true quarterback trait. Take this possession for example. The Raptors switch on the DHO, and Embiid immediately posts up Siakam, who in response fronts Embiid. Then Harden, on the move, floats it over the defense for the deep Embiid catch and score. I mean, these are half-court entry passes that take less than four dribbles and four seconds to complete and convert. Little things, they matter too. Not enough people understand the importance of them. When you've got a player on the floor that has as much gravity as Embiid does, it's important to get the things around him right and make teams pay. Instead of taking possessions off, Harden's body language reads, what can I do to help? The double comes off of Harden, he gets in a ready position and makes the extra pass. The double comes from the same place, so Harden relocates takes advantage of the rotation and creates a great opportunity for Tobias, who here drives and kicks the Sixers swing and generate an open three. And of course, manipulation. The two-man game, specifically with Embiid. These two are able to get any sh Hold on, watch the opposing big chop his feet. You chop your feet, you're beat. They're able to get any shot on the floor that they want on demand. Coming, bro. Full court pressure and beat screens, trails, and plows through the defense. If you notice, Embiid communicates with his near side teammates so he and Harden can get the look they want. Now catch this. It looks like Harden tells Embiid, roll. And based on, well, the Wizards hedge and get caught. So the screen and roll works to perfection. I don't think by accident. Now you're watching Max Christie, our side defense. Harden's got tabs on the eventual victim, Embiid, and Christie. Because once that passing lane opens, it's a body at the rim. Bro was an accomplice. So there's the Embiid dribble drive shots at the rim out of the two man. And then there's the, I'll drive and make something happen for you, bro. Shots at the rim. Which, full circle, are partially only possible because of Harden's combos, burst, separation and playmaking moving on drew stops ball james gets rid of him and then the chaos ensues drew's in his back pocket and brooks got endless outcomes to worry about his fate death by midi what's funny about this is i don't think i could tell you what the higher percentage look is out of the two man a joel lay or a joel midi Honestly, I think he'll tell you the midi. And they're damn near the same thing for him. Let's see. Now we've got two different kinds of looks at the basket, the mid-range shot, and of course, the pick and pop, where MB gets busy from beyond the arc. There's so many different options. And you know what that leads to? More options. The screen's coming. We just saw it lead to a bucket. So the Bulls are getting ready to zone up on the back end. DeMar's got the middle, and Caruso's got both. Except PJ moves, and James is a step ahead. 
Charlotte goes over the first screen and plays typical drop on the second. That produces a wide open lay. Or a midi, it's the same thing. Now watch, Plumley can't get to Joe. So who's gonna take him? Well, Kelly's got James, but I guess he will. But now what about James? <laughs> the only defender in the paint picks up James. So Embiid cuts. This alerts Rozier. Harden reads it, and Melton benefits with a wide open three. Now, in Harden's first game against the Clippers this season, he posts 21 assists in a single game, 11 of which went to Embiid. All that to say, the Clippers couldn't stop it, they feared it, and that opened the game up for Harden's and Embiid's teammates. This is what happens when you pair two very high IQ ball players with great feels for the game on the court together who both understand the importance of constant communication. You get whatever look you want and the guys around them eat too. And with that, I'm out of here. I'm gone. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you could, please show some love. Stay safe, gang. Stay solid. We'll talk soon.